Okay, while we were off camera, a couple things I went ahead and did. Uh, if you remember, I purposely cut these long. I probably took about another inch and a quarter off of them. What I wanted to do was leave only the part of this gusset that went, that went down straight. If you remember, when it got to about here, it started to flip up. Like on the old frame, it would have flipped up and gone straight out. So what I did is I just took a little straight edge and figured out exactly where it stopped being straight and I cut it right there so that I'd have a maximum contact area when I go to weld that on there. Okay, uh, right now we've just got the hardtail. It, all it is is just clamped on. It's just mocked up. Uh, it's nowhere near ready to weld. It's just clamped on, mocked up so you guys can see what it looks like. Big T, if you want to get kind of a pan out and get kind of a bigger shot of that. So they can kind of see the profile of that, see how it looks. Okay, now just to head off a question that I know I'm going to get a million times. Everybody always wants to know how much length these hardtails add versus the stock wheelbase. So I'm just going to hold this uh, tape measure up here. This, I'm just holding it at the center of the swing arm pivot bolt and I just took a junk axle off the shelf and threw it in there and that, that axle's in there as far forward as it'll go and I'm getting about 18 and a half inches from center of pivot bolt to center of axle. Okay, Just so you guys know out there in chopper land what kind of length or this thing does or doesn't add. Okay, Now a couple of the next question I know I'm going to get a million times a day is can you install this thing without a frame jig? Okay, If a customer sent us his frame and had us do the install, which by the way would do install a hardtail on uh, a bare frame, any of our hardtails for $250. But anyway, if somebody sent me a frame and had me install this, uh, depending on the situation, if I was having trouble getting everything to level out, I'd pro I may throw it in our, one of our couple frame jigs and, and do it that way. Do you absolutely have to use a frame jig? Uh, I'm going to give you a couple of tips that will allow you to get away with that because without a jig because I know most people don't have a frame jig sitting around their shop. This may be a one-off project you're doing one time. Okay. <clears throat> one thing you can do is go ahead and, and Put your, put your, clamp your frame to a table like we've done and take your time and level it. Make sure that it's sitting dead balls perpendicular to the earth and dead balls level to the earth. Take your time. There's a, there's a lot of wet, a lot of things you can check. You could check the level, you could check the perpendicularness of the seat tube. You could check the levelness of the down rails, you could check the levelness of some of these brackets, just take your time, get it sitting dead balls perpendicular to the earth, okay? Once you get that, take you a junk axle, take you a piece of three quarter rod, whatever, throw it in the slots, push it full forward, and then just throw a level on top of that bad boy. Okay, so uh, just you can just throw a uh, level on the axle, and if, if it's bubble level, dead bubble, with the frame dead perpendicular to the world or dead uh, level, however you want to look at it, and if that's dead level at the position that you're going to tack it, you're okay there. That's probably the most important thing is getting it so that the axle is dead level. If you screw that up, the bike's always going to try to going to want to try to turn on you if that axle is. If this is how it's supposed to be and it's like this or like this, it's going to be like you're leaning into a corner all the time. You may feel that. Okay? Not to mention premature wear on the, on, the, on the belt drive, the chain, whatever you put on it. Okay? Now the other thing to check would be the, a common distance from, the, from center axle to say uh, a, a known center point on the frame. For example, if you take your time and you've got this uh, pivot bolt, uh, it's a little tricky to use because it's mounted in rubber. But if you put, let's say you put some solid bushings around that and you could measure center axle to center of something like the pivot, you may have to put something longer in there so that you get a straight line to it. 
you don't you wouldn't want to have different angles going toward that that wouldn't help you at all but basically as long as the center of the axle is the same distance from a known center point on the frame you also know that you don't have the hardtail on there cocked at all now if it goes on slightly cocked like say a sixteenth or something that's not the end of the world because you've got your axle adjusters you can move your axle that m a little bit to correct that is that the best way to do it no you're going to want to get it on their dead level dead uh, so, it's, so the axle slots aren't cocked at all you, you're, of course you're going to want to get it on there perfect but the, the most critical thing in my mind is getting it so the axle slots are level then get it so that the uh, axle far forward without any cocking is going to be same distance to a known center point on the frame then you're going to want to get it up in to this can. You're going to want to get it as far forward towards this. Uh, there's this really heavy uh, C channel bracket that comes from the factory. You're going to want to get it as far forward towards that button clear up against that as far as you can. And you're going to want to get the lower rails pocketed up into the uh, the cups, the cupped part of the tubing as it comes okay the other thing I might do we're not going to go ahead and, and weld it in this video but the other thing I might do I'm a kind of a gusset freak because I build frames for a living and I don't like lawsuits so I gusset the hell out of everything the other thing I might do is pick some real choice spots to gusset stuff I might put a gusset uh, right in here in this crotch from the bottom of this down to this massive heavy seat tube I might just fill that in with a gusset on each side. I'd probably, coming down here, Big T, I would probably, once you get this real solid welded all the way around here, then I might, I might put a, a triangular gusset from here back into this crotch, back out. I might do that on both sides. Uh, you, I just, uh, you can't hardly ever have too many gussets. That's, uh, you know, ask anybody that builds a racing frame. Uh, they're always gusseting and triangulating. That's how they get strength without adding a lot of weight. So look for uh, look for places to add gussets, and you can make them cool looking. You can Swiss cheese them and put lightning holes in them, and uh, add a little flavor to it. So uh, that's the real basics of how to get one of these on and mock it up. Uh, before, if I was going to go ahead and weld this on here today, I would really extremely thoroughly clean up all the paint. So I'd go around here, all this area I would do that before I, you know, I take it off, completely clean it off very thoroughly, clamp it all up exactly how I want it, weld it on there. Back on the subject of uh, gussets, you might even consider just uh, adding to this, this plate here. You might even just add to that and gusset that on down since you're going to have so much stress right here on this joint from this trying to move up and down the rest of the of the bike's life you might just continue this plate gusset which is really heavy quarter inch stuff you might just gusset that in take that on down probably could take it down quite a ways because you're really not going to have anything up in here unless you got some weird oil tank design so anyway boys these are available on the site now uh, we got them for sale on there been having uh, people have been asking for hardtails for the rubber mounts for a long time now. Go get them.